You can find me on Instagram at yoga with Bryony. I'm so excited to be here at the Ala Yoga headquarters here in Beverly Hills. And what we're about to do is practice together a level one 30 minute power vinyasa practice. You're gonna get your flow on, start to sweat a bit. I'll throw in some core work and balance you out with some stretching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Allo Yoga YouTube channel so you don't miss out on all the awesome content. Let's get started in child's pose. Coming down onto your shins, big toes touching, arms forward, bring your forehead down onto the mat. And just allow the skin on your forehead to gently crease towards your nose. And use this very cozy, comforting position to find your ujjayi breath. And allow that breath, breathing in and out through the nose, slight restriction of the muscles in the back of the throat to guide you throughout this entire practice. Take a big inhalation with me here. And sigh it out. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, rise up into tabletop position. Hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. This is a really wonderful place for those of us who are beginning with yoga to really begin to build some awareness to our foundation. So many injuries, wrist, elbow, shoulder, neck injuries come from a lack of awareness in what we should be doing with our arms in our basic postures like down dog, plank, chaturanga, and even up dog. So use this tabletop position to look down at your hands. Make sure they're realistically shoulders distance. Spread your fingers wide. If you have any shoulder or wrist pain, turning the hands out so the index fingers are forward really helps with that. Otherwise, middle fingers forward. Grip the ground with the fingertips. Root through the index finger knuckles. Firm the forearms in to engage the front of the chest. And then spread the shoulder blades wide to engage all of the shoulder girdle muscles. From here, we're going to take three cat cows just to begin to warm up the muscles around the spine. First, let's take the back bend. So let the sit bones, the sits bones rise up. Begin to drop the ribs down and pull the shoulder tips back as you gaze forward. Inhale. Then exhale, push through the hands round. So the tailbone draws down, the navel draws in, and the shoulder blades spread wide. You can even draw the chin to the chest. Let's do that more rapidly two more times. Inhale, find the back bend. Exhale, round, draw the navel in. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, round. Inhale, find a neutral spine. Tuck the toes under and lift the hips up, downward facing dog. That stance is usually a bit too short for down dog, so step your feet back just a small step. Look forward at your hands, reaffirm the solid foundation. Grip with the fingertips. Root the index finger knuckles down to make sure you're protecting the outer wrist. Firm the forearms in, spread the shoulder blades wide. Then just allow your head so, uh, to be between your arms so that the ears are in line with the inner biceps. From here, put a little bend in the knees. Come high up on the toes. For those of you who are really tight in your back, so low back, mid back, hamstrings, keeping the bend in the knees in your down dog is really gonna be more effective than trying to straighten the legs. With a little bend in the knees, come up onto the balls of the feet and think about lengthening the sides of the waist, drawing the outer hips up and back. Then from there, you can begin to get the heels a little bit heavier. Doesn't matter if the heels actually touch the ground or not. Inhale, shift forward into plank pose. Bring your shoulders over your wrists. For most of us, we need to step our feet back a little bit. So the balls of the feet are underneath the heels. Draw the ribs and the navel in, spread the shoulder blades wide. Inhale and exhale, put your knees down. <laughs> Great job, plank isn't easy. From here, I want you to shift the shoulders past the wrists, making sure that the navel stays in. Bend the elbows until the elbows are in line with the shoulders. Then all the way down to your belly. Untuck your toes, feet hips distance, push down firmly through the feet. Take your hands underneath your shoulders and place them down so the index fingers are pointing forward. Then pull the hands back towards the feet, push down through the hands to lift your chest up. You can keep the navel down 
the gaze down as well, just to make sure the back of the neck is long, and just pull the hands backwards to open the front of the shoulders. Keep lifting the inner thighs, firming the hamstrings and the quads. Inhale fully. Exhale, lower all the way down to the forehead. Taking the hands back underneath the elbows this time. Same position, upward facing dog is also available to you, you can do it. If you wanna do cobra, keeping the pelvis down, internally rotating the thighs so the inner thighs draw up, or you can push down through your hands, lift the pelvis up, pull the shoulders back, inhale, and exhale, knees down, big toes touching, take a child's pose. As foundational as those poses are, as simple as they seem, practicing them correctly is so important. It's really the key to an integrated and safe practice. Hmm. Firm the hands down, tuck the toes under, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now we've worked the arms, the legs, the core, we've opened the back and front body. Let's walk the hands back towards the feet for Uttanasana forward fold. Keeping the feet hips distance is key. A little bend in the knees, fold over the thighs, grab a hold of opposite elbows. Let the crown of the head weigh down. Make sure your feet are straight so the second toes on the feet line up with the kneecaps. If you're really tight, keeping that bend in the knees is key to staying safe. If you want a little bit more sensation, you can begin to lift the kneecaps to engage the quadriceps and straighten the legs. As you inhale, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, draw the navel and the ribs in, allowing the crown of the head to weigh down towards the mat. Then fingertips underneath your shoulders. Inhale, find a flat back. Exhale, put a deeper bend in the knees and fold down. Inhale, rising all the way up towards standing, sweeping the arms out and up. Exhale, bringing your hands to your heart. Make that journey, walking forward to the front of the mat. We're going to begin a couple of or a few slow rounds of Surya Namaskar A. I'm going to do stepping back, stepping forward for the first one, and then we'll maybe incorporate some jumping. Feet together, big toes touching, a little space between the heels. Inhale, sweeping the arms out to come up. Exhale, turn the hands out and dive forward as you fold down, taking the hands down to the mat. Fingertips underneath the shoulders or on the shins. Inhale to a flat back. Plant the palms flat, step your left foot back, and then your right foot back into plank pose. Inhale, shift forward so the shoulders come past the wrist. You can always place your knees down. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. If you're an up dog, I want you to lift your knees up. Lift the inner thighs to the ceiling. Pull the shoulder tips back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathing here, reaffirming that strong foundation in the hands, the arms, and the shoulders. Pulling the navel in and making your heels as heavy as possible to the earth. Maybe a little bend in the knees if needed. Inhale, look forward. Bring your feet together. Come high to the toes. Bend the knees and exhale. Step your right foot forward as far as you can. And then your left. Big toes touching. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rising all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to your heart. Great job. So I'm going to incorporate some jumping back, jumping forward. We'll keep it really light. If you need to stick with the stepping back and stepping forward, that's completely fine. Inhale, arms reach out to come up. And as you exhale, they go out to come down. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, plant your palms flat down. Have at least a ruler's distance between the hands and the feet, and you might even need to bend your knees to plant your palms flat. Grip with the fingertips. Now, if you're jumping back, especially if you're doing this for the first time, you'll want to make sure that your chaturanga is really solid because we're not jumping back to plank. We're jumping back and taking the heart forward, bending the elbows, finding chaturanga, then through the vinyasa. And if that's not for you, step back to plank, lower down, and meet me in downward facing dog. 
Same thing here with the jump forward. It's not the most important thing to create a shape or to do a transition. What's more important is that it's integrated and it feels good in the body. Look forward, bring your feet together. Come high up on the toes, bend the knees. You can always step forward or keeping the hips low, especially if it's the first time, just take a little hop to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back, exhale to fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to your heart. So by now, you know how you want to do your last round. It's up to you. Step back, step forward, or jump back, jump forward. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, dive it forward. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, plant the palms, jump or step it back through the vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog couple breaths here. I'm moving a bit more rapidly than I would in your full length yoga class because I want to make this fast, fun, and efficient for you. Um, and if we spend too much time somewhere, you might lack in other areas. But again, this is my pace. If you need to take it slower, do so. Bring your feet together. Inhale, look forward, rise to the toes, bend the knees, and exhale, step, or take a gentle hop forward to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Great job. Hopefully you're feeling a bit more balanced than when we started, a bit warmer as well. We're going to move it a little bit further forward. Bend the knees. Tap the ground with the fingertips to get nice and low. And then inhale, reach your arms up. If your shoulders are tight and you're feeling this is a lot of cramping in the neck, taking the arms slightly forward or even back next to the hips can be really helpful. Sometimes even the hands to the heart. That way you can really focus on the benefit of the pose. Look down. Make sure you can see your toe tips. If you can't, shift the weight back into the heels. Firm the inner thighs together, but also squeeze your butt and draw the lower navel in. Sink down a little bit deeper. If you haven't used your arms yet, maybe reach your arms up just for one brief moment. Inhale and exhale. Fold forward over the thighs. Straighten the legs. Drop your head. Inhale to a flat back. Plant the palms flat down. Step it back. Jump it back through the vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Just feeling how the movement of your body, accompanied by that ujjayi breath, can really begin to invigorate you and create that internal heat. From here, bring your feet together. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, bend your right knee and bring the right knee forward, bringing the shoulders forward over the wrists. From here, Push down through the hands, lift your butt up as high as you can, and step that right foot forward. If it doesn't quite make it between the hands, I want you to use your right hand to step your right foot all the way forward. You really do want that right shin in a straight line. From here, place the left knee down, and inhale, rise up into Anjaneyasana. With that left knee down, if you feel any knee pain, you can always take your mat, fold it up underneath that left knee. That way you have a little more cushion or experiment with tucking the toes under and really pushing down through the ball of that left foot. From here, I want you to warm up that hamstring of the right leg, pull the right foot to the back of the mat, elevate the pelvis, inhale, and exhale, bring your fingertips down to the mat. Scoot your left knee back, straighten your right leg. Flex your right foot, inhale to a flat back, and exhale to fold. Nice stretch for the hamstring of the right leg, even into the calf, especially if you're flexing the foot. If you can't reach the ground, using blocks underneath the hands for anything throughout this sequence, feel free to do so. If you don't have blocks at home, you could use books, any sort of box of sort works as well. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, bend into that right knee, fingertips underneath the shoulders. Lift your left knee up off the ground. Now I'm going to introduce to you Virabhadrasana 1, 
or warrior one, which is typically used in the Surya Namaskar B sequence, or Sun Salutation B. Spin your left heel down. Maybe you know this one already. <laughs> Traditionally, it's heel to heel alignment. Left toes point slightly forward. I find that for most of us humans out there, this is really narrow. So I prefer hips distance and width of the feet. Then inhale, rise it up. So this is quite challenging for the body. It can become challenging in squaring the pelvis to the front of the mat. Then the knee sometimes feels a little bit of pain, maybe even that left um, ankle. So just make sure that you're not thinking only about squaring the hips. You don't have to square the hips if it hurts you, right? So just feel the body. If it's available to you, internally rotate that left thigh so that the inner, inner thigh draws back. Draw the lower belly in. Draw the outer right hip back. Inhale fully. And exhale, taking the hands down, coming to the ball of your left foot, step your right foot back, vinyasa. Maybe the knees come down for chaturanga. You can always do a cobra instead of an up dog. And then downward facing dog. Take a deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. And let's do the other side. Bring your feet together. Inhale, left leg rises up and back. Exhale, bend the knee and come forward into plank. This is hard, but you've got it. Pull the knee forward, push down through the hands. Try to lift your butt up and step your left foot forward as far as you can. And if it doesn't quite get between the hands again, use that left hand. From here, place your right knee down. Probably have to scoot it back just a little bit to make sure the knee is behind the line of the hip. And then rise up on Janayasana. Making sure that your left knee doesn't go beyond the ankle, that it's right above it. And also, if you're quite flexible, don't just sag down. Firm the thighs in. Think about drawing the navel in towards the spine and protect that back knee like I taught you on the right side. From here, inhale, lengthen the sides of the waist. Exhale, taking your hands down to the mat, scooting the right knee back, straightening your left leg. A lot of times we don't think of Anjaneyasana as a hamstring strengthener, but I do feel it if I'm isometrically pulling back. So now, stretch what you just worked, flex your left foot, inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, fold it in. Firm the inner thighs in towards one another, and then draw the navel and the ribs in. You might find that you get a deeper stretch in the fold. Inhale, flat back, bend into your left knee, Lift your right knee up off the ground, spin the right heel down. Again, line it up, heel to heel or hips distance. Inhale, rising up, Virabhadrasana one. As you inhale here, think about lengthening the torso. So instead of just sinking down and let everything opening up, pull the ribs in, the navel in, lift the back ribs. Engage your left hamstring here, pull that left hip back and into the midline. Think about pushing that outer right foot back into the mat and internally rotate your right thigh bone back. Inhale fully and exhale, taking your hands down, coming to the ball of your right foot, stepping your left foot back, lowering down and through your vinyasa. Taking those modifications as needed. Great job. So we've done warrior one. On this next round, I'm going to couple warrior one with warrior two and some other great leg strengthening postures. But first, let's take a bit of a cleansing jump forward. <laughs> Bring your feet together. Inhale to the toes. Look forward. Bend the knees. You can always step or take a light hop to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to standing. Feeling long and tall and strong. Exhale, hands to your heart. Utkatasana chair pose. Not always my favorite pose, but really beneficial for those legs. Bend the knees. Inhale, Utkatasana. Reach the arms up if that's available to you. Move the weight back into the heels. Firm the glutes and firm the thighs. Inhale. Exhale, fold it all the way down. Inhale to a flat back. Plant the palms. You can step it back to down dog. You can jump it back to chaturanga. You could even step it back to plank. Whatever your body needs, your mind needs right now. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. 
Exhale, bring your thigh forward, shift forward into plank. Spread the shoulder blades apart, lift your butt up, step your right foot forward as far as you can, and then move it forward if needed. Spin the left heel down, warrior one. Inhale, rise it up. As you exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Open into warrior two, so your torso faces to the left side of the mat. Heel toe your right foot to the left one step and then open the arms out wide. Make sure your right knee points directly forward, that outer right hip pulls back and in. Your left toes point just gently forward and draw your low belly in. Take a deep inhalation and exhale, sink down deeper. Work those legs, gaze over the right fingertips, from here, flip the right palm, inhale, reverse your warrior. This feels really nice on my right side body. And then from here, straighten your right leg. You deserve it, you've worked your legs so hard. Inhale and exhale, just bring your arms back to that center position. Draw that right hip back. Make sure that your right knee isn't hyperextending. So thinking about really lifting the shin forward, lean the right arm all the way forward and then down. This is where you could take your right hand to your right shin. Just make sure it's not bearing too much weight. You could even take your right hand to the ground on the outside of the shin. And if you so choose, if it's needed in your body, use a block. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using props. I use props all the time. Reach your left arm straight up, thinking about opening from that left collarbone, drawing the shoulder blades away from the ears and the navel in. Then from here, bending back into that right knee, rising back up into your warrior two. And exhale, windmilling your hands down, taking the palms flat, coming onto the ball of the left foot, reach your right leg up and back, bend the knee, open the hip. After working that right leg so hard, this is a little gift to your body. You could even make circles with that right knee. And if you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, straighten your right leg straight up, shift forward into a one-legged plank, and see if maybe you take that vinyasa down a chaturanga with one leg. Place the right foot down for up dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Great job. Almost there, left side. Inhale, left leg rises up and back. Exhale, use the front body, use the protraction, the spreading of the shoulder blades. Step your left foot forward. Spin your right heel down, first heel to heel or hips distance. Inhale, rise it up into warrior one. Pressing that right inner thigh back, inhale fully. Exhale, hands to your heart. You're going to open to the right side of the mat with the chest. Heel toe the left foot to the right, one step. Heel, front heel to back arch is the typical stance here opening into warrior two. Making sure that your left knee doesn't go beyond the ankle, drawing that outer left hip back and into the midline. Navel in. Most importantly, smiling. <laughs> smiling the collarbones apart, maybe even the lips curl up into a smile. Bend a little bit deeper. You're strong, you got this. Flip your left palm, inhale, reverse your warrior. Keeping that bend just for a moment so that you can really isolate the stretch into the obliques the side of the core, and then straightening your left leg. Oh, that feels so good. Making sure to draw that left hip back, and now the stretch goes a little bit deeper towards the hip flexors. Inhale, bring your torso back to center. Being aware of that left leg, knee tracking over the second toe. I like to think about the shin trying to bend the knee, but the quad not letting it happen. And the quad is what straightens your leg, so make sure it's engaged. Then leaning the torso forward, pulling that left hip back and into the midline. Exhale, left hand comes down either to the shin, to the outside of the foot, or even on a block if you did it on the other side. And I used a block on the other side, so I'm going to do the same thing here. From here, as you open your shoulders, think about your front ribs drawing in. That'll isolate the stretch right where it should be, which is in the left, or excuse me, the right side of the body. Try not to open that right hand past the flexibility of the shoulder. So get that right hand in line with the right shoulder. Draw the shoulder blades down, maybe even look up. From here, inhale, rising back up into your warrior two stance. Exhale, windmill the hands down. Come to the ball of your right foot. Reach your left leg up and back. Bend the knee, open the hip. Oh, that feels good. You could even take little circles with the knee. Feeling that full 
rotation of the femur bone and the hip socket. And then straightening your left leg up, you can always just take it straight back to down dog or one-legged vinyasa, final little challenge here. Upward facing dog is when the left foot comes down. Exhale, take it back to downward facing dog. Great job. Take a deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. And come down onto your knees. Sit onto your butt and lie down onto your back. I always say in my classes, people always get excited when we lie down. It feels like there's a treat coming, and there is because we're doing some core work. Yay! <laughs> we'll do some yogi bicycles. Take your um, feet on the mat, knees bent for now. Interlace your fingers behind your head. We're just going to do 20 of them. First, pull your right knee in. I want you to try to challenge yourself by not letting the knees come past the point of the hips. Instead, reaching the elbow up high. Extend your left leg forward. Inhale. Exhale, twist left elbow, right knee. That's one. We'll do 10 on each side. That's 20. So switch for two, three, four. You got it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Halfway there, make sure you're breathing. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, almost there. 18, 19, and 20. Great job. Pull your knees back into your chest. I can't say that I love core work, but I do know how important it is <laughs> to keep a strong core. It helps our low back stay safe and really just carries us through happiness in our life. We don't have to have low back pain, so that's really important. From here, place your feet flat on the mat. Make sure your shins are in a nice straight line, feet hips distance. Push down through the heels, lift your hips up. Allow this bridge pose to be a nice counter for the hip flexors or front of the hips. After just doing all that core work and leg strengthening, work from shoulder to shoulder. Interlace the fingers underneath your body, press the palms together, and then take a deep inhalation as you exhale ribs towards hips, navel in. You do want to feel your glutes working, your hamstrings working, you just don't want to open your knees. That external rotation of the femurs really hurts the low back. Inhale, and exhale, release all the way down. Hug your knees into your chest and just take a rock and roll up to seated. A little variation of Ardha Matsyandrasana, just to make sure we're twisting, balancing out the muscles around the spine. Your left leg goes forward, your right foot over the top of the left knee. You can stay here and we'll take a little twist. If you want to take it into the full variation, you can bend your left heel to the outside of the right buttock. I'm not going to go there right now. Take your left elbow crease around the front of the right knee. First, pull the right knee in and really elevate the spine as you begin to twist open. If you feel like you can take it further, keep the navel drawing in gently. Move the left elbow to the outside of the right knee and open from there. You can press your left elbow forward as you root that outer right hip down, expand across that right collarbone, and maybe gaze towards the back of the mat. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, release. We're going to take the sole of your right foot to the left inner thigh, Janushirsasana. We just really worked or compressed that right hip flexor, so now we're going to open it as well as open the left hamstring. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold it down. As you inhale, think about reaching the crown of your head forward towards your toes, and as you exhale, navel in, fold a little bit deeper. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, sitting on up, and just switching sides. We're almost there. Extend your right leg forward. Cross the left foot over the right. Take your right elbow crease in front of the left knee. Pull it in. Lengthen the spine first. Root that left sit bone down, and then take your left fingertips behind you. As you inhale, expand. As you exhale, revolve open. And if you did it on the other side, move your right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Push the elbow forward and deepen that twist. But stabilize the pelvis, protect the low back, draw the navel in, inhale, and exhale, release. Last pose, sole the left foot to the right inner thigh. Inhale, reach the arms up. 
and exhale, fold down. Feeling the left hip flexors opening, feeling that right hamstring lengthening. One more deep breath. Inhale, look forward, sitting all the way up. If there's anything else you want to do in your body, it's your practice, do it. Our bodies are all so different. I know when I practice at home, I tend to do my own stretches anyways. So if you're ready, lie down onto your back. Close your eyes. Shavasana is such an integral part of practicing yoga. I like to think of it as the most important pose. So if you have enough time to dedicate to this pose today, please feel free to take it as long as it serves you. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste.